Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we are looking at nodes once again. So this is episode 4 of Node School and today we're looking at projection techniques and thinking about unwrapping objects. Do make sure that you've looked at the previous episodes if you're unsure about anything. And if you like this course then make sure you check out my other playlists which are in the playlist section in my channel. Now for today's session I'd like to show you how you can add image textures to your objects in different ways. So let's go up to the shading tab and the shading workspace and I'm going to leave the cube there but I'm also going to add a plane. So shift A to add mesh plane and I'll grab that in the X axis so it's off to the side slightly. We'll be using the cube later but for now let's concentrate on the plane so I'll add a new texture and I'll zoom into the plane with period key on my numpad. I'll just adjust the workspace slightly and zoom into our nodes. Now just as a quick practice try adding an image texture to this plane. Okay so hopefully you remembered that you press shift A to add texture image texture. We hook the color up to the color and we can open up an image. The image that I'm using you can download from textures.com, link in the description, but any image is absolutely fine. So we can see immediately that the image has appeared on our plane. And of course we can change aspects of our material, maybe put the roughness right down to make it all nice and shiny and glossy like some sort of marbled floor. Now the reason this was projected onto this image is because when you add objects they automatically are given a UV map. You can find that down here under the object data properties and then go to UV maps and there is my UV map for this plane. Each one of the mesh objects you add in Blender 2.8 they automatically come with a UV map. So if I click on the cube now you can see that's also got a UV map. And it's important that we understand a bit about UV maps. So what I want you to do as a bit of practice is to add all the mesh objects, so shift A, all these mesh objects into the scene. Apart from the grid, there's no need for that because it's pretty much the same as the plane. So I'll quickly add them now. This is easier in layout mode. Okay, so I've added all my objects. Let's go back to shading mode and start thinking about how the materials are mapped onto them. So if I click on my cube, how do I make my cube share the same material as this plane? Have a think about that and try and set it up. Well, we go to the down arrow where our material name is and we've got two materials here. We've got our original and material 001, which has our texture on. I'm actually going to rename this marble as it looks a bit like marble. Now we could do the same for each of these and go through and give them the marble material or what's a bit quicker is to select them all and select one of these ones that has the material last. So shift left click to select that as well. Notice that this is yellow and these are all orange. The yellow one is the active object. So when I press control L now, so control L, I can make a link and I'm going to make a link with the materials and then I'll take the material from the active object, which we can see along here. So let's have a quick look across and see how the materials are being projected onto our objects. Let's take the cube for example and press full stop on my numpad or period key on my numpad to zoom into that. Now we can see that there's some obvious seams. It's actually a bit tricky to see because the edges are so rigid. So what I'm going to do, you don't have to follow along with this bit, I'm just explaining. I'm going to go to the modifiers and add a bevel modifier. I'll make the offset a bit smaller and up the segments and right click and shade smooth. This way we can see that this has a smooth transition across here. Whereas the top here, we can see this obvious sharp line between our two textures, which is really noticeable here when there's an obvious color change. So unwrapped objects have a seam. You can see the seams if we go to UV editing. I'll change this across to look dev mode again and zoom into my object. Now I'm in edit mode and we can see our UV texture space here and you can see how it's unwrapped. If I select all these faces and grab, you can see my texture moving around there and you can see how the seams are affecting where the textures placed. I'll right click that to cancel that. What we can also do is come up to the UV menu and say seams from islands. So this island here it will show us where that island is with these red lines. So this is the same as if you were to have marked seams. Don't worry if you don't understand that it's not important now. But what we can see is where these orangey reddy colored lines are that's where our seams will be. So if I go back to object mode we can see there's no seam here because there was no orangey line but there's an obvious seam here and an obvious cut in the texture. So this is a flat projection of our box. It's been unwrapped and spread out 
into a 2D space like this so we can apply our texture onto it. So take a moment to have a look at the other objects and see how they've been unwrapped. So you may have noticed the sphere, for example, they all squish up at the top here. And we can take a look at those seams by selecting all up to the UV menu and seams from islands. And you can see all those seams in there and how it sort of spreads out. We're gonna get a lot of stretching across here as this is actually quite a small area in here, but a big area on our texture space. So you can see that stretching going on there. And we can see similar things going across where there are obvious seams in our textures such as around the top of this cylinder. So let's go back to the shading workspace and think about the way we can change the way the texture is projected onto our object. So this next bit will only work with the Node Wrangler installed, so make sure you have that installed. If you need to install the Node Wrangler, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and type in Node and make sure it's ticked. If I click on this texture and press Control T, we get the mapping node and the texture coordinates. So the mapping node is quite useful because I can scale up my textures in different axes, as you can see happening here, or I can make them seem much bigger in different axes as well. I'll reset that to one, or I can rotate my textures. But I'm not going to focus on that at the moment. What I want to focus on is the texture coordinates. And you can see when it's initially set up, it's going from the UVs of the object. So when these aren't here, and when I bring in my image texture, Shift A, texture, image texture. It automatically sets up these transform nodes, although we can't see them, looking at the UV map that we've got created here. So let's press Control T again to see that. Now there's different options down here in our texture coordinate node. If I go from window, you can see that wherever I move my viewport, it just projects that straight onto the objects. So as if the viewport window is acting like a projector. We've also got camera. Let's look through the camera now. Press N and go to view and then lock camera to view under view lock. And now when I move my camera around, you can see it's following my camera. It does seem to be the same as the viewport to be honest. So I'm not really sure how these are particularly different. But to be honest, I very, very rarely use them. The main ones that I use are the UVs, which we talked about already with the UV map there and generated an object. So let's try generated to start with. Now this, to start with, generates it flat. So flat from the top here, as you can see, and then it stretches down our shape. And then on the bottom, it's almost as if it's going straight through our object and we can see our texture again. A similar thing happens with the object. These are very similar, generated and object, and there's subtle differences but generally, if one isn't working, just try the other, rather than me trying to explain it all, which I probably wouldn't do a great job anyway. Now what I can do to make this 3D, as it were, instead of flat projection, is come to the texture itself and change the method to project, the second one down, to a box instead of flat. And now you can see it wraps it around your objects as if the projector had been turned into a box somehow. So in other words, it would actually have six projectors pointing inwards from different sides. So on our cube, for example, if I move in fairly close, we can actually see the seam down the side here and the seam along here and here. So it's projecting the image this way, this way, and this way. Let's go and see how it's done this with the sphere. So if I keep moving in, we can see a visible seam down here and going across here. In fact, I'll right click and shade smooth so we can actually see that seam. It's actually quite hard to see, but you can just see it going up here and round here and down here. So our projectors again are going from the different sides, top and front, as if they're on different sides of a box. And we can see that if we continue along and the cylinder, for example, does a very strange projection. As you can see here, this projector coming from the side here and skewing as it hits the cylinder there. The one I want to focus on a bit more is the monkey. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to this. So up into the modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier. I'll right click and shade smooth. Now you can see the seam going down here where our sort of projection is meeting each other. So these two projectors are meeting each other around our box. And obviously on the other side, we will see it somewhere on the front as well, going across here. It's actually quite tough to see and it does a pretty good job. So rather than UV unwrapping your objects, you can use this texture coordinate method 
with the box projection. There's one other thing that's really useful. Let's zoom into our monkey a bit more. And where we can see this seam, if I use the blend option, watch what happens to the seam when I bring it up. It blends the two textures together and it's now very difficult to see that there's any seam on the monkey head. So for more complex objects, which are undulating like this one, we can use a combination of the texture coordinates with this box projection and the blend in order to create nice looking, relatively seamless textures on our objects. So your challenge then is to try and find different textures and place them onto your objects using this method. Now you might want to take this challenge a bit further and maybe plug one of these textures into the roughness or the bump. Now I will talk more about this in the next session about using PBR materials, but I do want to show you one thing and that's if I move these across to one side and add the bump node, so Shift A, Vector, Bump. Hook that up to my normals and then I want to hook the texture up to the height. Now instantly you can see we've got slight issues. It's not the fault of the object or the blend mode or the box projection, it's the texture itself and also the way Eevee interprets bump nodes. Basically at the current time of this tutorial, Eevee doesn't like using black and white information from these textures into bump nodes. We can fix this to a degree by just bringing it down a fair bit and having objects with only a slight bit of bump. You can also have very high resolution images and then you won't get so many artifacts as you can see here. And it doesn't look too bad. So this particular method is not a very effective method. And in the next episode, we'll talk about proper normal maps and how we can use them. So have a go at creating interesting looking materials out of just one texture without any unwrapping needed. And in the next episode, we'll talk about PBR materials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.